Hello everybody, welcome to week five. We're on to advertisements. All right, so the lecture is not specifically on toy packaging, but uh, your assignment will be a toy packaging assignment. So here we go without further ado. Um, so we start off at the tail end of the 19th century with these lovely Silver Sears and Robux illustrations. And you know, they're using they're using illustration because it's cheaper to produce um, than using a photograph. Um, they can, you know, uh, have this format that really, really they, they'll use throughout the years. Um, but it just it doesn't cost as much as using the photography technology. Um, so then, once they had started using it, they just kept using it. Uh, Sears and Robux at that time sold like everything. So here we have the sewing table with the sewing machine. And here we have some dresses. Um, but now we move on to the beginning of the 20th century. One of the major things that happened in the, in, in the early 20th century was the lead-in and then following conflict that was World War I. So you see a lot of illustrations trying to get people to join up and, and support the military. Um, so we get a lot of illustrations of guys looking really just like go-getters. They're, they're taking care of business. And then we get, uh, other illustrations with, you know, just really trying to portray, um, the, the other side, uh, you know, the Germans, the, the Hungarians that, as villains, you know, here we see them as, as this ape, you know, um, stealing the damsel. So we need to enlist so that we can go beat the snot out of the ape. Really doing our best to separate and color, color things, the, you know, as dramatically as possible. So we're, here we have, uh, a couple of illustrations trying to sell bonds and, and, you know, support with your money. Um, we, <laughs> we use some pretty harsh language to, to, uh, to send us back a couple of centuries using, using, uh, uh, barbarians, um, and then, you know, crush, crushing people with, with money, uh, you know, just trying to make these striking images that'll really sit with you so that, you know, you, you do want to give your support. Um, when we get to the Randall Flagg sort of, uh, Uncle Sam illustrations, you know, and he just always looks really confident and really, you know, we, we want to do what this guy says. He just looks really stern. You know, you join the army. Oh, okay, mister. Stop looking at me like that. Um, but he's always in red, white, and blue and just, you know, kind of this icon that is our country, you know? But it's not all about wartime illustrations. A lot of it's about selling goods and services and, you know, luxury items. So here we have this woman and, you know, she's she's living the good life. Um, she's all haloed in gold and she's looking a little provocative and perceptive and, you know, I, we're, we're just supposed to want whatever it is that is in that box so that we also look provocative and perceptive. Um, here we have the BVD roundup. Um, you know, cowboys were in at this time, I think. So the roundup was a good thing. Um, but then we have just these different guys doing different things and they're all looking very manly and, you know, it's obviously because of their BBD stuff. Then we get into, you know, some black and white illustration with, um, this is, this is illustrations looking really elegant and, and like the font and the eyes is looking super elegant. The woman's looking pretty elegant. She's kind of got this very flapper sort of hair and it's just really daintily applying her makeup. I don't know that she can actually move her body like that. She looks kind of like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but she's elegantly looking like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, so also noticing, um, you know, the font can be really activated. So here we get the, the font, uh, an illustration that's purely made up of font. Um, and we're starting to look at late twenties and, and the thirties and, and just, um, things having to do with the Great Depression, uh, leading into the Great Depression and all the politics <laughs> behind it. Um, you know, the, here we have uh, Hoover looking very much like 
the, some of the communist propaganda that you s saw in the early 20th century. Um, then we start to get into sort of the marriage of photo and illustration. You know, we're not talking uh, Photoshop era. Somebody had to go in and draw all these bubbles with the little hands, no matter how silly they seem. Um, more, more with font and and these really simple uh, uh, silhouettes, but not silhouettes, but high contrast uh, illustrations. You know, breaking the form of the face down so much it doesn't need to be anybody in particular. It's just man in suit. Everybody, everybody needs money. In the early days of cigarette ads, where you know we have the doctor and he looks so healthy and vibrant, and uh, here try these luckies, they're really great. You know, it's sure to do great things to your body. Everything's you know green and red, uh, you know like just happy complimentary color, um, and then he's got such <laughs> flushed cheeks. Everything's looking great, right? I'm sure, that'll work out well for you. Um, <laughs> then we get the Kool Aid advertisement, and we have. You know the nice, nice cool colors in the background with the, with the near compliments popping off, and then and then we depend on, on the design of the, uh, the Kool Aid font to really, really pop it off the rest of the way. Another black and white one. This one's for Morton's iodized salt. Uh, you know, we have everything going, straight up and down and left and right except for the iodized salt, and that that containers on an angle and the most active part of the illustration and so you know where to think you know Morton's iodized salt is gonna really do what it needs to do it's really gonna add some dynamism to our life um, very simply is sort of stating that because we have to negotiate it on an angle like that here we have a free bomber trip to Berlin uh, another Randall flag uh, this one for the 19, 1940 census. Um, it's your America, you know. You don't want to do the census, even if people are coming and knocking on your door. Uh, now we're moving on into some toy illustrations, though. Um, and ju I just want you to pay attention to the tropes that people are using. You know, we're obviously using these heavy line illustrations with some, like, really simple coloring. Um, we have drop shadows on, on our fonts. And you know, the box is moving from this light blue to this, to this uh, just white. Um, we have the fun tabletop tennis drawing. Um, we have cool colors, uh, you know, our greens and our blues and our light blues, um, and then a fun little font. We get to our baseball cards. We have our flashy reds and yellows. We really want to pop off the shelf. Um, I'm not sure the tops did that so well, but I guess they didn't do so poorly either. Then we get the really simple Slinky illustration. Um, Slinky's so funny, man. Like, it amazes me that that's a toy that still sells. Like, it was, but, but whatever. Um, we have kind of a dynamic illustration. They have the Slinky moving. The font of Slinky is so good. Um, but really we're talking a minimal box here. Like, it's just box colored with red red type and illustration over the top. The more exciting instant fish illustration. I love the cutout of the fish at the top. I, I, uh, I always envision the Jesus fish when I see this fish illustration. Um, so we have the varying levels of cartoony here. We have the cartoony fish and we have the cartoony children which are slightly more realistic and then we still have you know kind of cartoony but even more realistic fish inside the jar there um the fonts are really fun you know we have yellow and red and playing off of like the blue for the box like it really pops um i'm not sure that it's super successful those children are very creepy in a way but i'm sure that somebody wanted to buy the instant fish here we have the beetles with no hair. I love these magnetic things. Um, so, anyway, your assignment this week is to make some toy packaging. So, congratulations, you have just been hired by Professor Funnyton's Lafateria to create packaging for their latest line of novelty products. This could be your big break. Create a finished illustration packaging design for one of the products listed below in three-dimensional form. 
We are to finish your piece as a mock-up of the packaging as close to how it will actually appear as possible. That means a box should actually be a box. A die-cut backer card should cut out into an actual shape with a hanging hole, and so on. So you're welcome to use a clam card for pouch, a blister card, a box. Um, and the next slide shows you the different types of things that you could do. You're also welcome to come up with your own your own toy if you so please. Um, I would ask if you want to do a different toy that you just drop me a, drop me an email and ask me if it's chill. Um, all right, so that's your assignment for next Monday. Uh, I'm sorry this one got up a little late. Uh, complications in life. Sorry. So anyway, I'm looking forward to looking at your celebrity portrait sketches, and I will be in touch very soon. Thank you. Take care.